Welcome to 5th grade math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to be covering equivalent fractions. And equivalent fractions are very important when working with adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, or any other more complex fraction material. And equivalent fractions are also important for overall number sense for everyday life. So there's a couple rules we are going to need to follow with one main big rule that we'll get into once we start number one. But for number one, two, three, and four, those top four there, we are going to find two equivalent fractions for each two. And then five and six, we, we will go over what we'll do for those when we get there. Uh, and after this video, this is the instructional video, the mastery check will be the exact same thing as this. You'll find two equivalent fractions for each, and then you'll have uh, a five and a six. So let's hop into number one here, and we have one half. So our main big rule for equivalent fractions is whatever you do to the numerator, you need to do to the denominator. Or whatever you do to the denominator, you need to do to the numerator. Now, if you don't know what numerator and denominator are what those are those are the top number is the numerator and the bottom number is the denominator so whatever you do to the top you got to do to the bottom or whatever you do to the bottom you have to do to the top and you can use multiplication or division now this might be confusing as we first start off but as we go through I promise this will get easier and make more sense and just like all of my other instructional videos, I highly suggest you write these out with me. So let's see one half here. I can multiply those numbers by anything I want, any number in the world. And as long as I do it to both the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator, I will get an equivalent fraction. So let's say I'm going to multiply them both by 5. And I get one half is equal to 5 tenths. Is 5 out of 10 the same thing as a half? Yes, those are equivalent. Or maybe I want to multiply them both by 2. And I get 2 fourths. Is 2 fourths the same as a half? Yes, they're equivalent. So again, as long as I do the same thing to both the top and the bottom, I will get an equivalent fraction. I can use multiplication or division. Now one half, if I want, wanted to use division, there isn't anything I can divide one and two by. I can't break that down anymore, so I can't use division for that one. And as you do more of these, you, you will see which ones you can, can use division for and which ones you can't. So that's just something you will get a hang up get the hang of as you do more of them. So number two, again, whatever you do, do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. So I'm going to multiply them both by 100. And I get 200 five hundredths. That is equivalent to two fifths. Um, and how about two fifths? I will multiply them both by three and I will get six fifteenths. Six fifteenths, two hundred five hundredths, and two fifths are all of equal value. They just have different names. That's what an equivalent fraction is. If you, let's pretend we have, I'm gonna draw uh, a terrible scale here, but let's say we're weighing two fractions on each side, and we have two fifths over here and two hundred five hundredths over here, they would weigh the same. And I'm going to put a base on my scale there. They would weigh the same. They just have different names, but they are equivalent. We followed our rule. We multiplied or divided both the numerator and denominator by the same number. All right, let's go to number three. We're going to use division on this one actually for our first equivalent fraction. What can 12 and 16 both be divided by? Well, they're both even, so what goes into all even numbers? I'm going to divide them both by 2 to get an equivalent fraction. 6 eighths. And then I will use 
another Division One actually. Let's see who's really on the ball here. I gave it away though. Four. I can divide each of those by four. That's a common factor or a common number that can be divided out of both 12 and 16. So 12 divided by four is three. 16 divided by four is four. Since I gave that one away, let's try division for eight tenths. Think to yourself, what can I divide both eight and 10 by to get an equivalent fraction? Well, they're both even, there's your hint. Hopefully you're thinking two. I can divide both of them by two to get an equivalent fraction, and I get four fifths. And then let's use a multiplication. Let's multiply them both by, oops, that's a division sign. I said multiply. Multiply them both by three, and I get 24 thirtieths. So that's how you find equivalent fractions. Follow that main rule. Use a, uh, multiplication or division, and whatever you do to the top, you gotta do have to do to the bottom. So let's go to number five here. And we have four fractions. This is kind of like equivalent fraction. I spy, I guess you could say. You are finding the fraction that does not fit in the list. There are three that are equivalent and one that is not. I'll give you a hint for number five. We want to find the one that is not equivalent to one half. So two out of four is a half, right? I can multiply the top and the bottom by two to get two fourths. Four out of eight is a half. I can multiply the one by four and the two by four. Eight out of 20 is the one that does not fit, that is not equivalent to one half. So that would be your answer. 8 twentieths is the one that doesn't fit. So let's go to number six, and I, I'll, I'll give you a hint here. We are gonna look for the one that is not equivalent to one third. I can multiply one and three by four to get four twelfths. So this is equal to one third. I can multiply one and three by seven to get seven twenty-firsts, or seven over 21. I cannot do anything to one-third to make it equal one-fourth. These are not equivalent. So one-fourth would be the one that doesn't fit there. So that's basically it for equivalent fractions. Time, to try, time for you to try some on your own to see if you have it down over at the Mastery Check. The Mastery Check will look just like this. So I will see you over there at the Mastery Check where you can give this a shot. Thanks for watching.